travel YouTube has a problem. It is a good old case of plagiarism. Someone building a career, a livelihood based on someone else's work. And these people probably don't even know about it. But my name is Adam and usually I make travel videos, travel guides and whatever else I get up to. But I feel like I kind of have to make this video even though it is a little bit outside of what I usually would make. This whole story starts back in June of 2023. I was back home in Copenhagen in Denmark and I wanted to make a travel guide about Copenhagen. And as this is where I live, I wanted to use that fact to make my video just a little bit different compared to everything else that exists. Of course, there are tourist attractions that most travel guides will mention, but I wanted to put my own spin on it and make sure that my video was at least a little bit unique. So to get an idea of what type of content was already out there, I watched a lot of YouTube videos about Copenhagen and I read a lot of blog posts about Copenhagen. Danes are very easy going and there aren't many things that can ruin their peace. And then I watched some more YouTube videos about Copenhagen. Danes are very easy going and there are not many things that can ruin their peace. However, like in every country, there are several unspoken rules. Every tourist should follow and respect. So today, hello. Didn't I just read that? Like this has to be a coincidence, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Never ever jaywalk in Denmark. While walking around Denmark, all the tourists will notice that the locals always passionately waiting until the green light before they start crossing the roads. Oh no. That might not even feel weird unless it's four in the morning, it's snowing and there are no cars to be found in a forcible distance. But no matter what, Danes never ever jaywalk. So no, that wasn't a coincidence. She basically word for word copied this entire article from Culture Trip. Forget about trying out your Danish skills. Even after learning some Danish words and phrases online, believe me, chances are really high that the locals will not understand a thing. Danish is a very tricky language and the Danes are well aware of it. Anyway, even if you try speaking their language, most probably you will get their response in English. And still, it it doesn't hurt your it's not just the same topics that she's talking about. She's just reading out loud from this article. Next and never ever call the Danes Vikings. While visiting some places here and seeing a group of locals, the Danes yelling skull, which means cheese on the local language, at the top of their lungs and cheering while holding up huge pints of beer. It's not unreasonable that an image of a Viking face will appear in the mind of any foreigner. However, even though the Danes are so proud of their fearless ancestors who conquered many countries in Western and Eastern Europe, starting from the late 8th to 11th century, most likely they will not appreciate being called Vikings. I strongly advise to find a better way of how to start a conversation with the local. Okay, like one of the problems you will also run into when you just blatantly copy someone else's work and not changing anything and not not fact checking anything, not doing your own research is that everything might not be on point or maybe it has changed since the article that you are taking was published. I mean, don't call Danes Vikings. I don't know, like that's probably just a personal preference thing. I really don't mind it. I think it's cool. Like when I was like 15, I lived, I was an exchange student and lived a year in Colombia. And one of my nicknames there was El Vikingo. And I loved it. You can also see in the comments of the videos, like a lot of people correcting her and saying, well, we don't mind being called Vikings. But I guess this only helps like push her videos even further because it's for a video that's really good engagement, like saying something perhaps a little bit wrong, a little bit controversial, because that often pushes people to make a comment, which helps her video get seen by even more people. But I had a video to make, so I moved on with my life, got the video filmed and completely forgot about this incident. Until about three months ago in December of 2023, when I watched the masterpiece of a YouTube video by H Bomber Guy exactly on this topic of plagiarism on YouTube. Seriously, go watch that video if you haven't, it's amazing. And then I remembered everything. So four hours later, I actually started searching for this video again and I immediately found the Culture Trip article, but I couldn't find the video. Admittedly, I probably only searched for it just for a couple of minutes, but I remember thinking, yeah, she probably saw H-Bomber Guy's video too and tried to redeem her ways and deleted the video. And then I moved on with my life again. Until about a week ago, March 1st, 2024. Because here I am in Malaysia, but in about one month, I'll be back home in Denmark and I want to make more travel videos from Copenhagen and from Denmark when I get back home. So I started watching some Copenhagen YouTube videos again to hopefully find some gaps in the Copenhagen content market. And there it was. Okay, so meet Anna Goldman. Anna has around 72,000 subscribers on YouTube. She has more than 10 million combined views on her close to 400 videos. From what I can tell, she does this for a living. With my job a few months ago, how do I run two channels on YouTube? Does it full time? 
run her YouTube channel and some businesses that are closely related to the YouTube channel. How do I run two already businesses? But we'll get to the business and money part a little bit later. Anna is originally from Russia, I believe, and she has lived in many different countries around the world. And she has lived in London, in Norway, and in Rome. And uh, this will be important a little bit later also. But back to Anna's videos. I was watching her Copenhagen video, and in the little sidebar, I got a recommendation for another one of her Copenhagen videos. Denmark, cultural shocks, or is Denmark really this crazy? Hey, hi guys, I'm Anna. Today I'm in Copenhagen. Let's take a walk and discover together those cultural shocks I'm talking about. Well, according to that little ladder right behind me, going right to the water, I guess you can swim here in Copenhagen. You can swim in the harbor in Copenhagen in some designated areas, but of course there are like these type of ladders everywhere for emergency reasons if you fall in the water and need to get up. But yeah, some places you can swim, but actually you can swim in this place that you're showing here. Shocking fact number one, five weeks of annual vacation, really. One of the biggest cultural shocks for the Americans in Denmark. Wait, 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 Anna, you're not American. How do you know what American thinks is shocking in Denmark? Oh, that's why. As the typical question you usually hear at the very beginning of summer, are you taking three or four? This means, are you taking three or four weeks of your summer vacation. Danes are entitled by law to at least five paid weeks of vacation during the year. And the law requires all the employers to permit at least three weeks of time off. Yeah, in this video, Anna got her script from an article written by K. Sander Mellish, an actual American who lives in Denmark and apparently does a lot of very cool stuff. Now, in this video, it's not the entire article from K that Anna has just copied and made into her own video. She's kind of taken K's points, but added some of her own things or from other places in between. And the craziest thing about all those bikes, they're not even attached. Danes are not using any chains or any other relevant equipment to protect their bike from being stolen. That's not true. Everyone locks their bikes. Usually it's just like an internal lock, I guess you would call it. But then we're quickly back to K. Competition versus cooperation. As we all know, American culture encourages and supports competition. Children there are engaged to excel and be the best in both classroom and athletic field. Denmark is much less competitive society. The key focus here is on collaboration, teamwork and solidarity. Children here receive so few or not at all grades at school until the age of 12 or 13, as well as class rankings here are very rare. Meanwhile, the adults here are less competitive at work and job titles are not particularly meaningful for the day. I mean, this point about competition versus cooperation doesn't really make a lot of sense in this video. I mean, first of all, how on earth would you even know this coming as a tourist? how the kids are being raised and how the job market works. Like, how could you know this after spending a couple of days in Denmark? I mean, it makes perfect sense in case articles, which she writes like from a more professional standpoint, but it's just so out of place in this touristy video. Okay, but this is almost like too much for my Copenhagen heart. So we have to move on. Let's go to Iceland. I've never been to Iceland, but I've always really wanted to go. So it would be nice to know what not to do in Iceland. And look, this video here from Anna about Iceland has around 350,000 views. It is her fifth most watched video. Now let's talk about Iceland and those things you should never ever do there. In order to save your money or save you from embarrassment or even keep you safe from harm. Let's jump in right away. Number one and layers matter. And you better always have your coat with you. The weather in Iceland can change dramatically. Yeah. So this video was written by Jon Sigurdsson on the site called Wonder Wisdom. It's just the same things and she's again taking the whole article word for word. Several times during a single day. While most days summertime in Iceland are quite predictable, still you can experience some sunshine in the morning, lots of rain in the afternoon and snowfall in the evening, adding crazy winds on top of that. This weather pattern is even more common and extreme during the winter with the occasional snowstorm. For fun. Number three, don't get caught in the dark 
or light. The amount of daylight you experience in Iceland might be drastically different from the amount of daylight you used to. During the months of June and July, it almost never gets dark, while in the months of December and January, it gets dark at 3.30 pm already and stays dark until 11.30 next day maybe she added like in her own few sentences here or there but probably 98 percent of this video is just Jon's article but we can actually see on the article written here that it was at least updated well recently here in 2024 and anna's video was posted over a year ago so maybe anna was first and the article came after so, i mean of course i've been checking <laughs> always which came first I mean, in the bottom of the article, it does say copyright 2017. And we can also like go in here into page sources and kind of search for here, publish, publish date. It does say 2017. I mean, I think this method doesn't work all the time, but for all the articles that I have found that it seems that Anna has taken from, the articles were published before. Anna's video. Never do your grocery shopping in Iceland in 1011. As 1011 is probably the most common supermarket in Iceland. But if you're really on a budget and would like to save your money, I highly recommend you doing your grocery shopping in places like Bonus, Kronan or Netto. Like what really strikes me with these videos is that, you know, it's like she's actually there. She traveled to Iceland. She is in that 1011 store picking around on all the products. Like this is at the same time the most lazy way that you could ever make a video just copying a script someone else has made but at the same time she goes to such great lengths to actually be able to pull it off like travel around the world and doing exactly the things that all the original creators are writing about in their posts seven and don't be fooled by the light beer in the supermarket in iceland that alcoholic drink she even copied the quotation marks Oh God. Iceland is called Pilsner and contains less than 2.25% of alcohol. With such low alcohol content, this beverage is not beer, no matter that it looks like it. Okay, let's first perhaps give Anna the benefit of the doubt. Perhaps she got permission to, to do this, to use these articles to make videos out of them. Well, she gives no credit to any of the original creators anywhere. Not in the video, not in the description. And like she really also, like, when you watch the video, she kind of really claims the words as her own. And like, this is my opinion. And like, this is what you shouldn't do in Denmark. I really recommend that you don't kind of thing. But you know, it is still a possibility that, that she somehow licensed the material, got the rights to, to use this written work and convert it into a video and have some kind of agreement where she didn't have to give credit if she paid for it or something like that. So I reached out to a couple of the original creators of some of this material and I just got a response from one of them. So let's head to Italy just to get the full context here. It's one of my most favorite parts of Italy and oh, I keep coming here almost every year. And disclaimer right away. <laughs> Guys, this is my channel. I'm sharing with you my favorite. La Maddalena Archipelago. The island, or better, Archipelago La Maddalena, situated in, situated in the northern eastern Sardinia, the archipelago La Maddalena is a dreamy place to visit. La Maddalena is made of whooping 62 smaller islands, but the majority of them will be truly tiny, tiny, tiny ones. And it's officially titled the National Park of Archipelago of La Maddalena. This protected paradise is a home to some stunning, absolutely gorgeous slices of nature. Okay, so here she's pretty much copying from the site called strictlysardinia.com, which is created by Claudia, a local Sardinian. I mean, Claudia has an amazing blog, strictlysardinia.com, and which is really in depth. And if you're headed to Sardinia, you should definitely have a look on that side. And this video is also kind of interesting because here Anna also kind of cherry picks the different parts that she wants to use for her video. So she wants to make a video about these different places in Sardinia. And then she kind of, for each place, she goes out and find a specific like article written about that place and then kind of drags them together. And our place number two, where I'm usually spending my time is Palau. Palau is a small town located in northern Sardinia, overlooking the beautiful Maddalena Archipelago. 
In fact, Palau is mostly known for its port, where you can board the ferry to La Madalena Island. In just this video, I found a couple of different ones she's pulled from, and for some, I haven't found any sources. Maybe she did actually do that work herself, or maybe I just haven't found it yet. But to figure out if Anna actually has permission to do this, I reached out to Claudia. I sent her an email basically asking if she had given permission to Anna to use her work. And um, let's just say that she hadn't. <laughs> Claudia did not know about this at all. And she has already reported this to YouTube. And in fact, something very interesting has already happened. As I know, it was only a couple of days ago that uh, Claudia reported this to YouTube. Because Anna had copied, at least in a couple of videos, Claudia's work. And in one of them, it was basically like the first one we saw with Copenhagen, where she had just taken a whole article and was just reading it basically throughout her video. So that was the whole video. And that's this one. And yeah, I'm sorry, this is in Danish, actually. I didn't really think about that. So I'll just translate. It just says that this video is not available. This video is no longer available because of a copyright claim from Claudia Tavani. So, I mean, that's great that YouTube is actually taking action and quite fast, it seems, that, that this has happened. Now, of course, I can't show you this video because I only I just noticed this now as, as I sat down to record this video here. Now, I didn't yet receive a reply from some of the other creators that I have written to, but I have not written to all of them yet. But at this point, I don't think I'm going too much out on a limb here by saying that Anna probably did not get the permission to use all of this work that other people have created. And at least in the case of Claudia and the Sardinia video that unfortunately I wasn't able to show you, we can say for sure that Anna stole Claudia's work to make her video. But we're not done yet. It gets actually a lot worse. But first, I just want to go back to Denmark again, because in this particular video, Anna compares Denmark to Norway. And remember from earlier that Anna has lived in Norway for quite a long time. So of course, she must be an expert in this subject matter. Denmark and Norway are so similar. So perhaps that's why all the differences stand out so much. Yeah, apparently not. Very often people mix Denmark and Norway, and I totally understand why. Even Danes can come to me that probably Norwegians are people. They're the most alike. They're the most alike. Yes, they share a long history together. For centuries, Norway was a part of Denmark, and they both. So this video was written by Michele Massen for a site called lifeinnorway.net. And that site has a lot of interesting information about Norway, moving to Norway, living in Norway, and well, yeah, life in Norway. So if that's like interesting to you, you should check out lifeinnorway.net. Alcohol culture. Denmark has much more relaxed relationship to alcohol, whereas the approach to alcohol in Norway is way more strict. You can easily buy hard liquor, spirits, wines or beers in any kiosk or any supermarket here in Denmark. As you might know from my previous videos, in Norway the state has a monopoly on selling alcohol and its selling is limited to a government-owned shop called Vinmonopolet. Like here again you can see she kind of one-to-one -one copied from the article and then wrapped it up as her own. Like, yeah, in my last video, I talked about this fact. No, you didn't. You just copied it. Always be careful on a bicycle. Danes love bicycling. It's clearly their favorite way of transportation. And again, she just went through so much effort to copy this article. Like she went to Copenhagen, went and found a street that has a lot of bicycle traffic on it, just to make this point. And again, in this video, it's basically just a one-to-one -one copy and eat like just the topics. Almost everything Anna says is just taken from the article. Again, she might throw in her own sentence here or there, but most of the video is this article written by Michelle Mason. But Anna's most watched video on YouTube is also about Norway. And it has a whopping 1.2 million views. But this one has to be the best one of all of them. And you can probably catch the theme here. This video is about what not to do. In Norway. In this video, I'm going to tell you my list of 11 things you should never do in Norway. I have many of you guys from Norway here, so if I'm wrong about something or I'm missing anything, please let me know in the comments down below. Number one, thinking that Norway is a small country. And it's just so random because right now I was just casually surfing Cora, as you do, looking for an answer 
to this exact question. Ah, and somebody has already asked this question. And it looks like there are quite a lot of good answers here. Hokon here has made a really good one that had that has 18,000 upvotes. One from Lionel here with 6,000. Yeah, that's a lot of good ones. Nice pictures. Okay, what about this one from Emma Jones? Emma Jones, sorry. Here are some things that you would be advised to avoid, both for the local sake, but also I think Thinking, thinking that, that Norway, Norway is a small, is a small country. country. Um, she just stole a Cora response and made it into a film video. I cannot imagine how many people don't understand how large Norway actually is. I've heard many times that some people actually think that to get from Oslo to Bergen takes two hours with a car. Let me open you a little secret. To drive from Oslo to Bergen takes seven hours to drive with no stops. No stops. And she got 1.2 million views on YouTube by doing that. Second, get too close to anyone, anywhere. At least Emma had a cool meme here. People in Norway appreciate their personal space. They're not being rude, it's just their nature. If you're not sure how close... Like in YouTube standard, this is a very, very successful video. I mean, over a million views, over 4,000 comments. Like This is a very successful video on YouTube and she stole everything. Almost. Again, probably added in her own padding here and there, but the whole concept, all the ideas, and most of the text she's just reading straight from Cora. So, I mean, thanks to Emma Johns, travel consultant and Aero Travels, for making a very good post with some very nice images, like even her own images here. Also, interesting, like the, how she picked it. Like some of the other responses had, you know, thousands and thousands of upvotes, but and but Emma's only had you know, like 200 upvotes. So she took one of the, I guess, smaller, more hidden answers to this question on Cora. Maybe she thought it was best or maybe it was a bit more hidden. Underestimate the word causally. Causally means cozy, which is extremely important for regions, whether it is staying inside. Did she even take the same image that Emma used in her blog? Okay, I think it's time to talk about money. Anna is a pretty successful YouTuber who has turned this into her career. I guess I owe you a little bit of explanation about what is happening and what am I doing here. This is Hollywood, Los Angeles, and this is the place where I live here. She's making seemingly good money from this. I mean, renting a house like that in LA can't be all that cheap. And she does say in some of her videos that she has, I guess, recently gone full time in YouTube and the businesses related to it. And yes, she mentions that she runs two YouTube channels and two businesses. And I quit my job a few months ago. How do I run two channels on YouTube? How do I run two already businesses? But first, let's just very quickly address how you actually make money on YouTube, as that will kind of help frame this whole situation. So one way to you make money on YouTube is via AdSense. So when you watch a video on YouTube, you'll probably be shown an ad before, in the middle, or after the video, unless you have YouTube Premium or you use an ad block. I mean, that company is paying to have the ad shown and the, the creator will then get a cut. But this amount can vary wildly based on the topic of the video, niche or topic area that the creator is in, the demographic of the people are watching and how long they are watching and probably a bunch of other stuff. But I just so happen to also make some YouTube videos and I'm in the same niche as Anna in the travel niche. And I also have a travel video about Copenhagen that is basically the same length as her video and has pretty much exactly the same amount of views. So let's quickly have a look at how much money I have made from my Copenhagen video. And I guess we can use that as some kind of reference point or estimate, at least ballpark figure of how much Anna could be making here from AdSense on YouTube. Okay, so my video here is called, what is it called? Explore Copenhagen, a local travel guide. And yeah, it has 50,000 views. And I think the first video we saw about Anna in Copenhagen also has just 50,000 views. And they are very similar in the length of the videos. So from this video, I have made about 2,300 Danish krona. So in US dollars, that would be just around 336. I mean, that's kind of nice. Nothing crazy, nothing life-changing, but of course you can imagine if you then get over a million views on a video, that really adds up. And once you have 
build up like a good library of videos like Anna has and especially videos that are kind of like evergreen. So like travel guides, you know, people can watch them for many years and usually they don't really go out of date. So you can like consistently get a lot of views on many different videos. So Anna could really be making a respectable amount of money from her AdSense. But depending on exactly how much she is being paid, perhaps not enough to make a living and maybe not enough to make a living staying in fancy villas in LA. But AdSense is not the only way to make money on YouTube. Another way is with sponsorships with brands. So working with brands to promote their products. Now for disclaimer, I have not watched through all of Anna's videos, but in the ones that I have, I have not seen her work with a sponsor on YouTube. I have, however, seen that she is working with and promoting brands over on her Instagram account, where she also has a respectable following. Of course, a post with a suitcase over on Instagram doesn't necessarily link back to her YouTube videos and the content that she is taking. But at the same time, it kind of does because, I mean, she's gaining so many views and subscribers from these videos that are based on someone else's work and she's building up her audience and her brand. And of course, some of that will spill over to her Instagram where she then will get paid. So I do think it was worth mentioning. The next way to make money on YouTube is to sell your own stuff. Now that could be anything, products you make, merch, travel guides, video courses, and so on. And this really seems to be the way that Anna is going as she mentions that she has started two businesses. And um, so, uh, Let's have a look at those. Okay, so one of her businesses here is called All Go Global. Can really read what it says. No limit to your next move. Your problem is solved. By guide, book a consultation. We'll get into that. It seems that the service that Anna is offering here is kind of helping you move to a new country or if you want to bring your business to new markets, then Anna can help you through either a consultation or a guide. So let's have a look at this guide. So, yeah, so this is a travel guide to Rome. So probably not that related if you want to move to an, a Norway or something. But I mean, she has a travel guide to Rome and it makes sense if she has lived there for a long time and she has several really videos on Rome and on Italy. Now, I won't actually buy her guide, I'm sorry. But as I mentioned, Rome is one of those places that Anna has lived and she promotes this guide a lot and she talks about it in her videos and it is linked in the description of pretty much all her videos. And she recently posted a video about 10 places that you should visit in Rome. And I mean, if you are watching that video, then you are probably going to Rome at some point and you could perhaps be in the market for a travel guide to Rome. But would you buy this guide if you knew that the video that convinced you to buy it was made based on someone else's work? Welcome to my channel and guess who's back to Rome? It's me. And today 10 things you cannot, absolutely cannot miss out when you're coming to the Italian capital for the first time. Piazza Navona with three fountains around it. Why my favorite? First of all, I live just two blocks away because that's why I'm coming here all the time. But also the first thing you will definitely notice as soon as you reach Piazza Navona is its oval shape. The reason behind it that it was actually built on top of Domitian Stadium in 86 AD. I mean, just before she just starts reading from this article that I found here, she makes it sound like really like it's her own work. But yeah, I live just around the corner. This is where I always go. And then she just uses someone else's work. So this part of the video is from this site called Rome. Actually, a travel guide to Rome. It looks very nice. If you're going to Rome, have a look at Rome. Actually, I'm usually coming here having my notebook and the pen. I'm writing lots of my thoughts, some scripts for my future videos. No, you're not, Anna. I don't believe you. I'm sorry. I don't believe you. Writing, hey guys, and then taking someone else's article. That's not a script. That's stealing. Is the Pantheon. So what is the Pantheon? Originally, it was believed to be a pagan temple dedicated to all Roman gods. What is the most interesting fact about Pantheon's open ceiling? That on the 21st of April, the birthday of Rome, the midday sun shines right through the oculus straight to the Pantheon door. So for the Piazza Navona, where she used to live right around the corner, she stole that from one article. Now she's at the Pantheon and she then took that from this article here from wantedinrome.com, which seems to be like a, a new site with news from all over Italy. 10 minutes away from Fantame di Trevi, what do we have? Spanish steps. 
And if you want to climb Spanish steps in Rome, be prepared to climb a whopping number 135 steps. The I mean, there's not that many steps. It's a beautiful place, but not that crazy. But of course, as usual, new place, new travel block. This time we have to go to the romanguy.com with his 12 astounding facts about the Spanish steps. Now we have looked at a couple of Anna's videos and some are like published over two years ago, but this video was published very recently. And you know, as, as I talked about earlier, I had kind of hoped that you had also seen H Bomber Guy's great video and by that perhaps get a bit motivated to change her ways. Now I only found like a few articles here that she used for this video, but perhaps there are more that I just didn't find yet. But the point is like, this is just so wrong. You're taking other people's work, wrapping it up in your own little package of a video and selling it as your own work to get views and in order to sell your Rome travel guide. And I mean, people who are watching these videos would have no way of knowing that she's doing this. And I mean, even all the creators of all of these articles have no idea of knowing it. Like even with how good AI is lately, I don't really know of like any good way to kind of, I don't know, search for copyright infringement in this way. Kind of if you have an article searching for videos that are, well, just reading up your article. And even if that did exist, you could just like change out a few words here and there to probably pass that. But I mean, and it doesn't even go through that much effort. Okay, but let's have a look at the consultation part of her video and her second YouTube channel. Okay, so here on the website, we are asked if we are ready to improve our life. So let's watch this video from Anna's second channel. Work in Norway. Guys, in this video, I'm going to cover for you all major subjects like what jobs are available in Norway. Okay, so this video is from Anna's second channel, her business channel, which has like 4,300 subscribers. And I mean, just the first line of the description of this video is very aggressively asking us to book a private consultation with her. But this video is about how to find a job in Norway, probably as a foreigner. So um, let's... Everything. No, screw it. Let me just immediately show you where she found the script for this video. So this is from a blog on a US website from a business called Prospects. And I think they kind of help new graduates find jobs, also in Norway, apparently. So they just have a blog post about work in Norway written by Gemma Smith. Norway is the best country to live, according to the United Nations, thanks to its impressive healthcare system and also life and work balance. This Scandinavian country has the population of a little bit above 5 million people, with the majority of it located in and around the capital city of Oslo and other busting urban hubs like Bergen and Trondheim. But this is probably the best part here. Norway has a stable economy and its unemployment rate is only 3.3% according to the statistics in September 2022. The country is very rich in natural resources like oil and gas, forests, fish and minerals. A service sector forms a large part of Norwegian economy. And its major industries include fishing, hydropower, mining, petroleum and gas, paper products, shipping, and of course, tourism. The largest Norwegian companies include BNP Paribas, Equinor, John Johnson Handel, Norges Gruppen, Norges Hydro, Orkla, Tory Brand Life Insurance, Telenor Group, and Yara International. I mean, I guess she did find the logos for these businesses, so she did change up something a little bit. Let me open a little secret for you. There are some industries in Norway with a shortage of occupants. International workers can have much more luck to secure some jobs in Norway if their particular skills are in demand. Workers are critically needed in Norway in those industries. Agriculture, buildings and construction, engineering, healthcare and nursing, IT, teaching, tourism, and of course, retail. So I guess kind of similarly as with the Rome guide and the video, Anna here is just using other people's work to sell her own service, except that probably a consultation with her is gonna be a bit more expensive than a $7 travel guide. And I mean, she's using all of these people's work to set herself up as an expert, both in the travel space and also in this relocation space. I mean, she is the expert on moving to Norway. Anyway, Anna mentioned that she had two businesses. So this business is called A2 Relocate. And it seems that she has this business along with another person called Anna. And what they do is, um, yeah, it's the exact same thing. They just help you if you want to move to Norway, to Scandinavia or to the US. It's the exact same thing. Now, I didn't watch through all of Anna's videos. And in the ones that I did watch, I didn't search through every single part of the video. So there could easily be more stuff that Anna has taken out there or I could have found everything. But Anna surely also has videos where she didn't steal anything. I mean, I have watched a couple of that are like more vlog style and more personal. I guess the problem she has with those videos is that they don't really seem to get a million views. 
All right, Luke, all of this is clearly not okay. And in my opinion, Anna should at least delete all of the videos where she has taken the scripts or taken parts of some other people's work and used it in her videos. I do feel a little bit weird making a video like this, calling out just one specific person. But at the same time, I think I might be like the only one who knows about this. So like, don't I then have some kind of responsibility of doing something about it because in the end this is really all about the original creators right the people who put in a lot of work and made some great guides and Cora responses so i have posted links for all the sources that Anna has taken from down in the description so you can check out the original creators if you want to. Going forward, I will be making travel videos, especially about Copenhagen and about Denmark. So if you would like to see some of that, subscribe, hang around. And if you're just here for the YouTube drama, I completely understand. But either way, thanks for watching and please don't steal.